Welcome to a new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Shabi, and this week we're talking about a mundane yet vital issue, drinking water. If you've ever visited Paris, you may have come across some of these green iron fountains known as Fontaine Wallace. Built in the 1870s, they're named after Sir Richard Wallace, a British philanthropist whose aim was to give the city's destitute free access to drinking water. Well, 150 years on in a first world country like France, it's easy to take such things for granted. But as you're about to see, the glass is only half full. We turn on the tap every day for water, and most of us don't give it a single thought. But how much do you know about its journey to get there? First up, water is collected, drawn from streams, springs, or groundwater. In France, two-thirds of drinking water comes from underground. Step two, making it safe to drink. In its natural state, water doesn't comply with sanitary standards. It must be filtered, cleaned, and disinfected to avoid any risk of contamination. Then comes the third step, distribution. Public utilities store water in reservoirs, tanks, or water towers. France's water system is made up of 850,000 kilometers of pipes, parts of which are old and need serious work. The latest figures from 2014 show France loses 1.3 trillion liters of water every year, the equivalent of 430,000 Olympic swimming pools, or 20% of all drinking water. To reduce this waste, the French state has launched major works. Its goal is to modernize the water supply as fast as possible, at an estimated cost of 2 billion euros per year. Join us now at the Water Pavilion on the right bank of the River Seine. It's here that Parisians can come and find out more about the water they drink every day. And I'm joined by Régis Den, who's in charge of water cycles for municipalities. Hello, thank you for being with us. Hello. As requested by the country's mayors, uh, President Macron has launched a, a consultation on the issue of water and the country's ageing water network. What are the priorities likely to be? There's a lot of work that lies ahead of us. The first warning signs were the aging of the pipe network. In the 1950s, there were around 50,000 kilometers of pipes that supplied the big cities and urban centers. In 50 years, we laid some 800 to 900,000 kilometers of additional pipe work. That has given more than 99 percent of the population 24-hour access to water at their home. 98 percent of those people receive water that conforms with quality norms. But the infrastructure that we've invested in over the past 50 years is now getting old. So in the coming years and decades, we need to think about replacing them. There are also other things that are at stake, like adapting to climate change. And then there's the quality of the water table and the sources of water that we use to produce the water that we consume. It's rather complex because over the past 50 years, the quality has been constantly diminishing, mainly due to pollution from chemicals used in farming. And how do you explain that France's water network is so patchy in places? There are two main reasons. The first is the resource's fragility, or its rarity. Wherever the water is rare, or where it's expensive to produce because of the amount of treatment it needs in order to be drinkable, obviously the operators or local authorities make sure that very little water is lost. That's not the case in regions where water is plentiful or where it isn't expensive to produce. 
because it comes from the mountains. The water flows by itself, the stakes obviously aren't the same. And so is that perhaps where technology can step in to help? In certain areas, there could be some innovation, like, for example, in terms of cutting costs when laying pipework so that the work is cheaper. We also have special circumstances, like the overseas departments, where small earthquakes can take place. They're not huge but they can damage the pipes and cause leaks. So indeed, it would be very useful to come up with piping that can withstand some small quakes. And we've talked a lot about the network. What about French consumers? Is there some work to be done there too? Well, we must be aware of the fact that as soon as we consume water, that has an impact on the environment, notably due to the extraction process. The stakes change depending on each region. How we dispose of used water also has an impact on the environment. One of the biggest sources of pollution is what people, often unintentionally, end up putting in the toilets or sinks, with baby wipes that block the pumps that end up in rivers. People throw medicine, paint and a whole bunch of products down the drain that cause pollution. Water treatment plants aren't designed to handle that kind of waste. So it would be a shame to invest huge amounts of money in treatment when the consumer just needs to pay more attention. Régisthène, thank you very much for having spoken to us. Merci. Well, as we've just heard, one of the environmental issues thrown up by the question of water treatment is that of pesticides. Used by farmers, these chemical products seep into the soil and pollute the water table. So how do you get to the source of such a problem? Take a look. In the French department of Yonne, this small village has been in the grip of a public health crisis for a year and a half. It's no longer safe to drink from the tap. So local authorities have been handing out bottled water. For the director of the village's retirement home, the situation is spiralling out of control. These bottles won't last more than 10 days. We're fed up. We need the problem fixed so we can get back to working normally. The problem started here, after a pesticide spread into the soil of this field, contaminating the village's source of water. There's a substance in this weed killer called metazachlor, which is dangerous when consumed by humans. On the face of it, there's zero chance of the same incident happening in Paris. Nevertheless, over the last few years, the body tasked with overseeing the city's water supply has decided to work on improving its quality at the source. They've established protective perimeters around water catchment areas. And they're teaching farmers how to farm using environmentally friendly methods. Nowadays, those who drink water knowingly support this new dynamic in favor of a type of agriculture that's more local, more respective towards the environment, and also towards the farmers themselves. Some of these farmers supply the school canteens here in Paris or elsewhere. So we're really in the process of reinventing the model on a global scale. This farmer from the department of Seine-et-Marne has already been won over. Some of these fields lie above a water table that's used to supply drinking water to the town of Coulombier. Eric Gobard describes the moment he made the switch to organic farming. Along with the neighbour, we said to ourselves, given that 54 hectares are inside the perimeter surrounding the three wells, we might as well convert straight away to organic farming. Eric didn't wait for any financial incentives from the government before making his decision. He also had to find his own solution to make up for the sudden removal of pesticides from his fields. It all depends on rotating different crops. The succession of different crops ends up making some of them, such as these broad beans, for example, enrich the soil with nitrogen. So the wheat that we'll plant next year is going to nourish itself with the nitrogen that we'll leave. A virtuous circle that's now been encouraged by government officials. Despite that, France remains, along with Spain, the biggest consumer of pesticides in Europe. Close to a third of water tables and half of rivers 
are thought to have been contaminated. I'm now at the saint Cloud water treatment facility just west of Paris and I'm joined by David Petit who's in charge of production at the Paris Water Network. Hello, thank you for being with us and showing us around. Could you start by telling us a bit about what you do here and how, for instance, you get rid of pesticides? We're here in one of Paris's six water treatment plants in saint Cloud. This plant will treat the underground water that comes from the Dreux region. There are two steps to the process. The first is when the water comes into contact with powdered charcoal. This step is key because it's essential to removing the pesticides. The ensuing mix will then be filtered through the membranes that we have here. And where does Parisian water actually come from? Half the water that Eau de Paris uses comes from surface water like rivers, which are then treated in water treatment plants, whereas the other half comes from underground supplies. And Parisians are very proud of their water. How good is it really, say, compared to bottled water, for instance? The quality has to be good because it's drinking water. Obviously, there are certain differences between bottled water but we make sure that the quality of our drinking water stays the same. The water quality has to comply with public health regulations, of course. The water also contains natural minerals. At every stage of treatment, machines check and analyze the quality of the water. But we also have people who taste the water to make sure it doesn't taste bad. There's also a wider security threat uh, because of the danger of terrorist attacks here in France. How is uh, that addressed here? The first thing to consider is how to physically protect the facilities. So we've put measures in place to control the access to them. Otherwise, it's all about protecting and keeping an eye on the water when it's treated, when it's stored, and when it's finally distributed, right up to when it comes out of the tap for the consumer. So Parisian water, and by extension French water, is still one of the safest in the world? Water is very safe in France. There's absolutely no risk to the consumer. David Petit, thank you very much. And thank you for watching this edition. Stay tuned to France 24, there's more coming up.